This is Apollo Control at 131 hours, 14 minutes. Our last conversations with the uh, spacecraft came at about 129 hours, 39 minutes, uh, a little more than an hour and a half ago.
after that, I got a couple minutes of work for you. All right, go ahead. Let's wait till after the handover. Are you there, Jay? Okay? Yeah, I'm hearing you loud and clear on me, Fred. Okay, we want to get some ranging data on you for about 15 minutes. So uh, close the power amplifier circuit breaker and go to normal voice, please. Okay, you're coming through good now, Fred. Uh, I've got three deltas to the checklist. Uh, they're minor changes. I'd like to pass them along now. One of them is to the uh, CSM checklist. Hope you'll pick that up. I'll give it to you. Okay, uh, which one? Okay, uh, stand by. This is the one uh, Jack wrote them all in. They go on lead out. He also wrote something in the GNN book. It's in the uh, big long one he wrote out at uh, about uh, EI minus 230, EMS entry check. Okay, he's coming back down with it. Meanwhile, Fred, I've got two for you on the uh, lamb prep checklist. Okay, Jack's there now. I'll hand it to him. Houston, Aquarius. Hello, Aquarius. Uh, I got a couple uh, changes for you on your uh, CSM checklist. Okay, stand by one. Okay, go ahead. Okay, Jack. Uh, the timeline between EI minus 2:30 and one hour is real crowded, so you're really going to have to hustle. And we've uh, decided to delete the. EMS entry check at minus 2.30. That'll give you a little more time in there. What we've decided to do with it is wait until after EI minus 1, just before you initialize the EMS. If you have time, and only if you have time, do the EMS entry check. Otherwise, forget it and go right on to into EMS initialization. You understand? Okay, you're going to delete uh, between 2 hours and 30 minutes and uh, 2.15 there. And you're going to add it if there is time, only if there is time at EI minus 1 hour where the EMS initialization occurs. That's right, you got it correctly. Okay, Jack, uh, one other item. Just before EI minus two hours and 15 minutes, we need an e-memory dump. Verb 74, enter. Over. Okay, st stand by one, would you please? Okay, right before two hours and 15 minutes, I assume that's before uh, uh, Miss gives their P27 update, I do a verb 74, right? That's affirmative, Jack. How much sleep did you get, Jack? Oh, I guess, uh, stand by. I guess, uh, maybe two or three hours. It was awful cold and, uh, it wasn't very good sleep. Right, did you plan to try to get any more? What, uh, GET do you have? We got 132.37. Well, if I, uh, if I get everything done, uh, I'll uh, try, but uh, I tell you, it's almost impossible to sleep. Uh, 
all of us uh, have that same problem. It's just uh, too cold to sleep. Roger, uh, the way we're looking at it, uh, looks like you ought to have a couple, three hours in here before you have to really get with it. Well, we'll, we'll take it easy, but I, you know, we'll try to sleep, but uh, it's just awful cold. Uh, President, that indicates that your uh, entry angle is minus 6.03 degrees. Your delta V at the mid course is going to be 2.8 feet a second. Okay, copy. Jack, uh, this is Jim. I understand it's going to be an RCS burn. That's affirmative. Jim's going to be an RCS burn. Okay. And uh, we need the suit circuit release valve back to uh, auto. The correction back to close. Hey, uh, Jack, uh, that's in work. And uh, one thing, comparing uh, Jim's checklist with my own, I find one difference there at EI minus 230. Uh, his checklist has me changing a, opening a EPS sensor signal circuit breaker right prior to turning off LEM power. Is, uh, I'd like to find out uh, which checklist is correct. Hey, Jack. The, uh the LEM checklist is just for information to Jim. It's just to tell him that uh, that you're changing back to uh, command module power. Your uh, checklist is correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jim, uh, and when do you uh, figure that uh, you'll be setting up the pads that uh, you have? Aquarius, all of your pads will be coming up in about three and a half hours at EI minus 630. And uh, one thing we want to remind you of, when you remove power from the command module LEM umbilical, is to be sure that you uh, open the LEM power main B circuit breakers, both of them, before you start uh, throwing switches and circuit breakers in the LEM. Do it as we've outlined it in the procedure in that order. Over. Okay, that's the way we plan on it. We'll let uh, Jack do his three, and then he'll tell us when, he, when we're going from there. Uh, what stages are the changes on? Okay, Fred. Uh, one I've got for you is uh, at the end of uh, power removal from the command module limb umbilical. And uh, just for your information, after you go through that entire procedure and uh, about the time you're ready to transfer to the command module, at that time, power will be removed from the umbilical and it's uh, okay to disconnect it. That is after you've uh, thrown the switches in the limb. Is that clear? Uh, Roger, that's uh, where I got a remark here to uh, check with you to see if it's all right to proceed. Roger, and that would be uh, just after on panel 16, you open the S and ECA control breakers. Uh, which step number is that? And the confusing thing is, Jack, uh, where they told me to wait for Miss Vinco before proceeding was that back two low volts off reset then on. Okay, that's uh, still affirmative. Uh, we'll give you a go after waiting five seconds. And then uh, down from there, just a few steps. After you have opened the S and ECA control breakers on panel 16, at that point, the umbilical is not powered, and it's okay to disconnect them uh, should you care to do so. Okay, after the last step, then I'm uh, free to disconnect. Right. And uh, one other change we have is uh, shortly uh, after that, 
where we're configuring for jettison. We have uh, closed both the forward dump valve and the overhead dump valve. And uh, we don't want to uh, get in a locked up position like that. So uh, one way to get around it is to, after we close the forward dump valve, turn the descent oxygen valve off. Over. Okay, after the forward dump valve, add a step in that says uh, decent uh, ox uh, valve off. Okay, Fred, that uh, concludes the deltas. And uh, perhaps you heard that our gamma is uh, still minus 6.03, and our delta V will be a 2.8 foot per second RCS burn. Uh, Fredo, we've got one more change we'd like to uh, give you to clarify a question that Jack asked earlier. At EI minus 230. Okay, hold on a minute, Jack. I'm going to have to call Jack back down. I'm uh, not familiar with uh, the previous discussion. Oh, negative. Uh, this is on your checklist. Okay, go ahead. Okay, at EI minus 230 during power removal from the umbilical. First thing we uh, do is two steps for the CSM. We open the main B, the LEM power to main B circuit breakers, and then there's a third step which says circuit breaker EPS sensor signal main B open. Just delete that step. Over. Okay, delete the uh, third step. And, uh, Corius, for your information, as far as our water supply is concerned, including our plans for power-up, we have uh, an additional 18 hours of water remaining from this point. Okay, 18 hours of water remaining from this point, Jack. Hello, Houston, Aquarius. Hello, Aquarius, go ahead. Okay, Jack, uh, this is Jim. I just want to make sure that you filter any of the changes to the checklist that come up to make sure they're absolutely essential. Uh, when we learn our procedures, we can only do it one time, and we can't make changes at the last minute. Uh, we like to do the best uh, the safest way possible, but unless the changes are really essential, don't bother setting them up. Roger, we won't. The uh, chairman of the CPCB is uh, still active. And uh, one thing we're trying to do is to save you all the time we can in between EI minus 2.30 and one hour. That's a firm. That's a real important time. Yeah, for your information, Jim, uh, I don't know whether you heard that originally, but that time from two and a half to one in there has been around about three times, and it's uh, pretty tight. So we've tried to weed out what we could, which isn't much. But I think the other message you might impress on Jack when you get around to lining that uh, platform, uh, don't try to get it down too neat. It doesn't have to be all that good. Just do a nice, quick, and dirty one, and it's going to be good enough anyway. I concur. I think for reentry, uh, we don't have to have a real accurate platform, but I have been telling Jack that. Right. Hey, Jim, while you're up and things are nice and quiet, let me uh, give you a couple other things to think about. One specifically, I know none of you are sleeping worth a damn because it's a cold. And uh, you might want to dig out the medical kit there around 1.35 or in that ballpark and uh, pull out a couple of dexedrines apiece and try one about then or another around uh, 1.39 to 1.40. Glad I brought that up. We might uh, we might consider it. Okay. That was Donald K. Slayton, Director of Flight Crew Operations, um, uh, interjecting some comments to the crew from the Capcom console. Also, I wish we could figure a way to get a hot cup of coffee up to you. It probably tastes pretty good about now, wouldn't it? Yeah, sure would. Uh, you don't realize how cold this thing becomes. Uh, we're in a, in a PTC mode that's slowing down, and I just clocked the cycles uh, from when I see the Earth. It's about 11 to 12 minutes now. And the sun is directly overhead, so it's shining on the 
bridge had been all of the service module and not cut down on the spacecraft at all. Hang in there, it won't be long now. Uh, that's right. Uh, as a matter of fact, doing this alignment on the Earth this time will be like uh, making a landing with a fogged up windshield. This is Apollo Control at 133 hours, 11 minutes. At 132 hours, 28 minutes, uh, Capcom Jack Lausma put in a call uh, to the crew. Uh, Fred Hayes responded. And we had him turn on the power amplifier, which, uh, in addition to greatly improving the quality of voice communications we get, also gives us ranging data, which the flight dynamics officer is using for uh, making final computations of the mid-course correction to be, be performed uh, in about four and a half hours. Jack Swiger reported that uh, He'd received, gotten about two to three hours of sleep, which he said was not very good sleep due to the uh, cold uh, in the command module. And Swiger said it is almost impossible to sleep and because of the cold. Uh, Donald K. Slayton, director of flight crew operations, uh, who's been at the Capcom console a good part of the evening and into this morning, uh, came on the circuit and advised Jim Lovell to consider taking uh, dexedrine tablets uh, for, the, for each of the crewmen. Uh, this is a stimulant contained in the medical kit. Lovell said that uh, they had considered that and would, uh, would think about it. At the present time, Apollo 13 is uh, 60,249 nautical miles from the Earth. The spacecraft velocity is up now to 7,900 feet per second, and we're some 9 hours 27 minutes until re-entry. We'll continue to stand by for any uh, further communications with the crew. Uh, we don't have any uh, anything planned to pass up to them in the next uh, few minutes or so. One of the things under discussion, however, at the present time in mission control are procedures which might possibly be used to increase the temperature in the lunar module. And uh, the LEM environmental and electrical systems engineer is looking into the uh, power status right now. As far as consumables are concerned, the possibility, uh, with the possibility in mind of perhaps bringing some additional equipment online uh, in the LEM to bring the temperature up there. We're presently showing a uh, cabin temperature in the lunar module of about 54 degrees. And we, although we do not have a measurement on the command module, we presume that it is uh, lower than that. And we'll continue to keep you advised on the uh, status of the discussion uh, going on at present in mission control on the advisability of powering up the LEM more fully to bring up the temperature. Aquarius Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Okay, Skipper, we uh, figured out a way for you to keep warm. We decided to uh, start powering you up now. And uh, what we want okay. you to do, what we want you to do is take your uh, entry lamb prep checklist and. Uh, Start at the top where it says bat five, normal feet on, and then jump over, as it says, to your 30-minute activation. And do all of the 30-minute activation up to, but not including the burn. You copy? Okay, if I understand you correctly, then that uh, gives me leeway to maneuver uh, when we get up to uh, Activation complete, and we can be in position for the burn, but we will not burn. We don't have a pad anyway. That's a firm, Jim. Uh, you could maneuver to burn attitude, or you could uh, maneuver to an attitude which would put the sun in the windows to warm the place up. Sounds good, and uh, you sure we have plenty of electrical power to do this? That's affirmative. Uh, we've got plenty of power to do it. I can get you a number, though. 
Jim, you've got about a hundred percent margins on everything from here on in. That sounds encouraging. Right. That's an OM. We're not talking about the CSM right now. Understand. Houston, Aquarius. Go ahead, Aquarius. Okay, question. Uh, the short turn on uh, step three on page 24. As is only uh, turning on the RCS system AB2 uh, quad. And uh, the breakers are still out on uh, panel 11. Uh, did you want those in too, or are we just going to use one set of heaters? Stand by. Aquarius Houston, uh, go as the checklist uh, recommends for now. Uh, when you get into the circuit breaker panel uh, configuration, you're going to get uh, the number one set of heaters on anyway. Okay. This is Apollo Control at 133 hours, uh, 34 minutes. We're following the progress of the crew as they uh, power up the lunar module according to the uh, checklist. And at the present time, we show the total average current. Okay, uh, Houston, uh, we'd like to get a hack uh, to set our uh, mission timer here, Jack. Okay, Fredo, uh, set it at uh, 133.35, straight up. You got about 30 seconds to set it. Okay, standing by. Okay, I'll give you uh, the two second delay in there. Stand by to start. Start. Okay, we got it. Okay, I'm counting 133, 35, 10. Right on. Showing about 34, 35 amps total current now. Aquarius Houston, uh, one other way to warm things up in a hurry in there is when you get your AC on to uh, turn on the window heaters. Okay, uh, I guess the only question I have is uh, what the Twabla do to it with the, uh, looks like almost a frost on it now. But I'm saying it, Jack, I think I'd like to let it uh, maybe warm up just a little bit more before uh, hitting it uh, with the heat load. Uh, not a bad idea. And as you can see, Houston, uh, let's turn on. We got our uh, old friend uh, downlink too fast. Oh, Roger, we've seen it, Fred. Aquarius Houston, uh, looks like you're proceeding toward Gimbal Lock there. I'd like you to check that, please. Uh, Roger. Not much we can do about it. We can't use the thrusters, uh, Houston. Okay, uh, forget it now. We'll get it later. And, uh, Houston Aquarius, uh, I guess the next thing for the paint will be a course of 100 but, uh, just let it hold up now until we get enough time on the RCS thrusters. Roger, we're looking at them. Uh, we'll give you the go on them. Okay, Aquarius, uh, your quads are uh, 120 to 133 now, so you're cleared for uh, cleared for thrusters. Aquarius Houston. Go ahead. Raj, did you get my go for RCS? That's the part we're going. What we're doing now, Jack, is letting the spacecraft drift in its bow to uh, pick up the Earth again. Okay. I don't want to just go uh, blast around the sky and get higher. 
my rates because I don't have anything to know the rates on until uh, the Earth comes back up again. And once, it, once I get the Earth in sight, we have no uh, strain on uh, no on rates. That part of the Earth, that is. It's going to be interesting today, Jack. The Earth's a lot bigger and the uh, crisis is a lot more pronounced than it was uh, yesterday. Well, you're going in the right direction. That's right. This is Apollo Control at 133 hours, 55 minutes. Uh, Jim Lovell has uh, stabilized the spacecraft at this point uh, using the uh, lab reaction control system thrusters. We're sh uh, showing a, a power level on the lunar module uh, right now ranging between 45 and 50 amps. The power-up procedure followed by the crew will have uh, uh, another effect in addition to uh, warming up the uh, LEM. That is that they're beginning a portion of the pre-entry checklist that had been scheduled for six hours prior to entry interface. That was begun at about nine hours, so uh, they'll be getting a bit of a leg up on that uh, portion of the timeline. At the present time, Apollo 13 is... Uh, and, uh, Jack, I guess we haven't changed our angle much uh, with respect to the sun, uh, 93 million miles away, so it ought to be about the same place in AOT, isn't it, uh, Charlie? Hold one on that, Fred. I'll get an answer for you. Okay. Aquarius, your uh, ASA is warmed up now. You can uh, activate the eggs. Okay. Aquarius Houston, uh, when you look out of Detent 2 and the uh, proper burn attitude, what you ought to see is the sun at 12 o'clock, about halfway between the top of the AOT and the uh, center of the pipper. And you ought to see the earth at okay. 6 o'clock. Okay. And it's getting a little warm in here now, thank you. Duck lines are always warmer, Jim, when the birds are flying. Right. Jack, I've gotten so used to flying attitude with the PTCA, I won't be able to do it normally. Say again, Jim. I said I've gotten so used to flying attitude with the translational controller, I won't be able to do it with the ACA. Aquarius, we see your uh, glycol temperature getting up there. If you want to make it a little warmer, you you can uh, try putting your uh, suit temp valve to high if you haven't already got it there. Okay. Aquarius, uh, something we're thinking about right now is uh, if we can do it without using a lot of RCS, uh, It'd be to our advantage, time-wise, to uh, try to get an alignment. Okay, you mean a uh, P-52? We're, I think, take a look around. Uh, combination uh, 51 and 52. Uh, I'll see what we can do, Jack. Okay, and uh, we'd plan to use the moon and the sun for that. Aquarius Houston on panel 16, we'd like you to close the cross-tie bow loads breaker, please. Okay, it's close. And it uh, looks like we could support a an alignment in a few minutes, uh, if you'd be willing to go ahead with that. Jack, it sounds good. I think from our position here, uh, we know where the sun and moon are, and it's uh, strictly going to be a pitch maneuver, so I think we can save some gas, and I'll see what we can do. Roger. Uh, Houston, Aquarius. Go ahead, Aquarius. We're good to go. Are you going to ship us up, uh, Rustman? Yeah, we are. Stand by one. Okay. And that sun feels wonderful. It's shining in the uh, rendezvous window. 
And Aquarius, before we can ship you a load, we'll have to uh, have on panel 11, under COM, the up data link, circuit breaker closed. It's closed. Roger, it'll be a few minutes. Okay, and it'll be a few minutes yet, Jim. We're still cranking it up. Okay, stay with Jack, and I'll go back to the data. Roger. I got fast in about 33 uh, and a third percent on that uplink. Too fast, so I'm off. Say again on that, Fred. Oh, I just got another uplink too fast when I took the data switch back off. It's uh, happened, I guess, about a third of the time. Roger. Aquarius Houston, we're ready with your load. If you'll give us data, please. Going to data. You've got it. Aquarius Houston, after the uplink, you'll have to set the drift and the rest met flag as on uh, page eight of the contingency book, steps five and six. Page eight, steps five and six, Roger. Okay, are you done with the computer now, Jack? Negative, we'll give you the word. Roger, Aquarius, they're through with it, it's your computer. Thank you. And Aquarius Houston, uh, take option one on the P-52 when you get to it. And uh, I've got some uh, ball angles for sun and moon. Okay, we want an option one, and you got some ball angles for sun and moon. Right now, uh, Jim has the sun uh, pretty well squared away right in the middle of the AOT. This is Apollo Control at 134 hours, 42 minutes. The crew began uh, powering up the lunar module at about 133 hours, 29 minutes, uh, a little over an hour ago. We've since seen the uh, currents in the lunar module come up from about uh, 10 to 12 amps to their present level of about 40 amps. Uh, these currents actually went to a high of about 70 amps before stabilizing out at uh, the lower level as uh, heaters uh, came online and brought the equipment up to the proper temperature and then dropped offline. And uh, the crew reported it is getting uh, somewhat warmer within the lunar module at this time. The cabin temperature uh, reading that we have on the ground is based on the temperature of the glycol and water boiler which is uh, related to the amount of heat being uh, transferred uh, into the water boiler and is about the best indication we have of cabin temperature. And that shows us that the cabin temperature now has come up from about 54 degrees to about 56 degrees. Uh, this temperature, however, does show some lag and we would expect that the cabin temperature has probably come up a bit more than is indicated by the temperature we're showing on the ground. And have uh, you got some uh, planet vectors for us, uh, Jack? Okay, Fredo. Uh, for the sun, I've got uh, 246. For the moon, I've got 250. Uh, you talking about small uh, theta angles? Negative. I was. Uh, I was reporting the uh, code for noun 70. They're in the computer, Fred. Oh, okay. Okay, Houston, we have the sun marks, and I'll uh, start a pitch now uh, to go over and pick up the boat. Roger. Uh, Houston, Aquarius. Go ahead. This is a note of interest. Uh, in this dock configuration for uh, B-52s, the uh, command module docking probe is right down the middle of the, uh, of the docking light, rather, is right down the middle of the uh, detent. And when the sun flashes on it, it really makes it difficult. Roger. 
This is Apollo Control at 134 hours, 56 minutes. In Mission Control at this time, we're in the process of handing over uh, shifts. Flight Director Gene Kranz is taking over from Flight Director Milton Windler. Uh, we will not have a change of shift briefing. The uh, Flight Director uh, plans to remain in the Control Center uh, through splashdown. And uh, uh, we therefore, as I said, will not have a change of shift uh, briefing, news briefing uh, for this ship. And summarizing uh, briefly the events uh, during the past eight hours, uh, from about 127 hours until about 130 hours, we passed up the command module and lunar module pre-entry checklists to the crew. Uh, following this, uh, the uh, uh, crew was advised uh, to attempt to get some rest. Uh, Fred Hayes remained on watch, but uh, we limited the number of calls to the spacecraft to allow uh, Fred also to get some rest. And at uh, about 128 hours, 17 minutes, Jim Lovell and uh, Jack Swigert indicated they were going to begin a uh, rest period. Uh, Fred Hayes uh, began a rest period at about 129 hours, 39 minutes. And at uh, 132 hours, 28 minutes, uh, we put in the first call uh, to the crew after Hayes began his uh, rest period. Uh, all three crewmen uh, responded uh, shortly thereafter, and uh, Jack Swigert reported that they'd gotten about two or three hours of sleep. But he said it was not very good sleep, that it had been quite cold and uh, almost impossible to, to sleep. Uh, Deke Slayton, uh, the director of flight crew operations, who had been in the control center uh, during the night and early, early morning, advised uh, Lovell at that point to consider taking a uh, dexedrine tablet. Uh, this is a stimulant carried in the medical kit. Lovell said he, uh, he would consider it. We've heard no report uh, from the crew at this time as to whether they have, in fact, taken any medication. In response to the uh, crew comments on the cold, we began looking at uh, some methods of bringing the lab temperatures up. It was decided that we had adequate power margins uh, in the lamp batteries and also adequate uh, water margins to power up the lamp early. Now, this had been planned to uh, occur at uh, six hours prior to re-entry, and uh, we began the procedure about three hours earlier than that, beginning the power up at about nine hours uh, prior to entry interface. At uh, 133 hours, 29 minutes, the crew began the checklist procedures to power up the lamp, and uh, the current levels in the lamp came up from about uh, 10 to 12 amps, which is the normal power down uh, current level, to about uh, 70 amps. And then as uh, heaters brought equipment up to temperature and uh, the heaters began to drop offline, the temperature stabilized out at about uh, 40 amps, and the crew reported that the temperature is coming up uh, within the lamp, and we've seen a corresponding rise in temperature uh, on our displays here. The uh, temperature we were reading in the cabin prior to the power up was about 54 degrees. Uh, since the equipment has been turned on, we've seen the temperature come up about two to three degrees. At the present time, we're seven hours, uh, 40 minutes, 54 seconds from entry interface and 2 hours, 40 minutes, 51 seconds from the mid-course correction number 7, which is planned to occur 5 hours prior uh, to re-entry. The flight dynamics officer is uh, computing final maneuver, the final maneuver pad uh, for this mid-course correction. Uh, the preliminary information on it was that it would be about 2.8 feet per second using the a LEM ascent uh, stage, or actually the LEM 
uh, reaction control system thrusters and uh, burning them for about uh, 21 seconds duration. We expect that we will get an update to this when the flight dynamics officer completes the uh, final computations for the maneuver. But we also have some preliminary uh, numbers for the entry. Uh, we suspect that these will change once the mid-course correction is completed. Uh, these are the same numbers which were passed out uh, at the previous change of shift briefing, and they are as follows. We uh, are predicting entry interface at the point at which the spacecraft reaches the 400,000 foot level to occur at 142 hours, 40 minutes, 40 seconds. Uh, the drogue chutes would deploy at 142 hours, 48 minutes, 53 seconds. And the main chutes, the main parachutes, would come out at 142 hours, 49 minutes, 43 seconds, with splashdown at 142 hours, 54 minutes, 40 seconds. As I said, we expect these times will shift somewhat uh, when the mid-course correction has been completed. Uh, we also have uh, times for the beginning of blackout and the end of blackout. Just like the simulator. Yeah, it was good training. And the time we show for beginning of blackout is 142 hours, 40 minutes, 58 seconds, and uh, time for ending of blackout is 142 hours, 44 minutes, 3 seconds. Well, uh, Jack, that's what it says the turkey angles are. We haven't got them yet. Aquarius, to hold on the torque and angles, please. We are doing that. Uh, Jim, the reason for the de delay is that uh, we're not seeing the data yet. We're having a checkpoint here, and uh, as soon as they come up, we'll let you know what to do with them. Okay, we had a large uh, 905 of a, well, what the, 112. And our torque and angles, Jack, are... Uh, Minus zero one seven one three, minus zero three two seven eight, minus zero one three nine five. Roger, minus zero one seven one three, and we see him now. Aquarius Torkum. Okay. At thirty five oh four twenty five. Aquarius, uh, do you have a star close by there you can check? I'll, uh, I'll look around, Jack. Uh, I'm just going to try to get a check on the moon again to see if those angles were deep uh, true when we got the moon back and get it centered. Roger. Okay, Jack, uh, what you're reading now on the angles, uh, we had the moon centered and it's uh, pretty close to what we have on the eight ball, I guess. Close enough for any entry that we'd like to do. Roger, and I'm told that uh, the nebula, the nebula, and Regulus are nearby. If you wanted to make a star check. Okay, I'm going to start pitching around again and uh, see if I can pick them up. I have uh, Orion out here to my left a little bit, uh, but it's pretty close to the. Uh, Oh, here, I've got Sirius. That's a nice one. How about that? Sounds good here. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 135 hours, 11 minutes uh, now to the flight of Apollo 13. Uh, that was Apollo 13 Commander uh, Jim Lovell talking with Capsule Communicator uh, Jack Lausma. While, uh, while uh, Apollo 13 uh, is uh, aligning the uh, platform in the lunar module, our digital displays now show uh, Apollo 13 at uh, 50,905 nautical miles away from Earth. Spacecraft velocity reads uh, 8,670 feet per second. 
We're at 135 hours, 12 minutes, continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Aquarius, is uh, Jack sitting on the rumble seat there? He was. Uh, he just uh, headed upstairs to take another look around. Okay, I got a minor addition to the entry checklist for him. This time it's in the, uh, okay, in the uh, entry book. Okay, stand by one. He has that in his pocket. Uh, what I'm doing, uh, Jack, is just, I'm pitching over now. Gonna pick up another star. Uh, the series was just too far off. I thought I'd use too much gas getting there. Roger. By the time I get aligned in the, uh, in the uh, AOT, be nice if we didn't have uh, Odyssey attached. We could just uh, auto uh, auto maneuver over to these things. Looks just like you got her line, Jim. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, confident that the uh, platform's uh, fairly decent. Aquarius Houston, we need an E-Mod, verb 74, when you got a chance, please. Okay, coming to you. Okay, Jack, go ahead. Okay, Jack, on your uh, entry checklist on page 2-5, Down there on step nine, where it says 152 degrees pitch at 05G. Adjacent to that, so that recovery can uh, see you better on the way down, we want you to turn your S-band power amplifier to high. Over. Okay, turn S-band power amp to high at uh, 05G time. That's affirmative. Okay, is that it? That's it, Jack. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 135 hours, uh, 27 minutes now into the mission. We're uh, two minutes, uh, 12, uh, two hours, uh, 12 minutes away from uh, scheduled time uh, of ignition for uh, MCC-7. And our space digitals uh, show 13, Apollo 13, at uh, a distance of 49,577 nautical miles out from Earth, traveling at a speed of 8,790 feet per second. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Aquarius Houston, uh, we're considering doing the mid-course with pings, unless you'd rather do it in eggs. No, pings is fine with me. I, I just uh, line myself up with the old ball again. So I've got you four-sided again, uh, but uh, any way you want to do it. Like you say, might as well go first class. I guess you're right. Now, wait a minute, Jack. I just lost a lot of friends there. And, uh, Jack, you can tell uh, Owen Mars that the RCS system AB2 quad one breaker is still uh, nicely uh, in. Roger, we'll pass the word. It's Apollo Control Houston. Uh, that was Fred Hayes. Talking to Jack Lausma, Owen Morris uh, referred to in that conversation as the uh, deputy manager uh, for the lunar module in the Apollo Spacecraft Program Office here at the Manned Spacecraft Center. We now show Apollo 13 at uh, 48,822 nautical miles away from Earth and at a velocity of 8,861 feet per second. At uh, 135 hours and uh, 37 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston.
race, Houston. Uh, we think we've uh, figured out a way to save you some time at a very critical, uh, or, uh, very full schedule. And that's by doing a uh, docked course line since we got the limb up now. That would save you a maneuver uh, or two. Uh, Houston Aquarius, it seems to me a, a dock course line might be quicker for uh, for Jack. Yeah, we think it would be, and uh, to save you quite a bit of time uh, at a place where you're going to be pretty busy. Also save you some uh, petrol. Uh, firm. Okay, uh, Jim, we're uh, looking at doing this in the uh, service module SEP attitude, and the optics will be pointed away from the sun, so it shouldn't be a good uh, attitude for P-52. Okay, so we'll be going to uh, the service module step attitude, at which time we'll do a dock course align. And uh, so then you want uh, you want Jack then to do a P-52? Uh, the way we'll uh, do that in our timeline, Jim, is to uh, go ahead and do the service module jet. And then we'll just stay in that attitude, and uh, when it comes time in our uh, timeline, as we've outlined, to uh, bring the platform up, uh, we'll proceed with the P-52, the course line and then the P-52. Okay, are we going to use the same techniques that we normally do for uh, limb activation? In other words, uh, I try to maintain an attitude and give him some angles, and then uh, uh, are you going to give him the angles uh, that he does the 52? Uh, basically, it's the same uh, procedure, just reversed, Jim. Okay. Another nice thing about this is it's uh, one we've uh, done before. And Aquarius, uh, one thing, however, that we do not plan to do is to uh, proceed with uh, command module power up prematurely. All right, Jim. Understand. Okay, uh, Houston, uh, this is Jack. Go ahead, Jack. Okay, I just wanted to talk over what it looks like we've had some changes in the uh, flight plan here due to Jim's uh, P-52. Uh, you have, uh, can you talk over with me what your plans are? Raj, uh, Jack. Since we've got the pings up, we uh, plan to use that information to uh, give the CMC a docked uh, course align. And then uh, when we're in the uh, service module jettison attitude, uh, we'll wait until it comes time to power up the CMC. And we'll give the CMC a docked course align. And we'll pick some good stars to give you a uh, final line with. And it looks like uh, we can pick some stars that uh, are looking away from the sun and, uh, and what you can find in that uh, service module jettison attitude. So we'll uh, save you quite a bit of gas and save you some time in a, a very busy time. Hey, that sounds good. Really fine. Keeping warm? Hey, it's uh, warmed up here now. It's almost comfortable. I'm looking out the window now, Jack, and that earth is whistling in like a high-speed freight train. That's uh, Command Module Pilot Jack Swigert uh, describing the temperature in Apollo 13. As you copied, uh, the comfort level is... Uh, yeah, down. we're uh, clocking at 48,000 miles and uh, coming in at about uh, 9,000. I don't think there's been many left that speed it like this. I'm still looking for Frau Morrow and Cone Crater. You're going the wrong way, son. That was uh, Donald Kate Slate who came on the Capcom line to point out to Jim Lovell that they're headed the wrong way for Frau Morrow and Cone Crater. Our displays now show Apollo 13 at uh, 47,858 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity reading uh, 8,956 feet per second. 
We're at 135 hours, uh, 48 minutes uh, down to the flight of Apollo 13. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Okay, Jack, it looks, uh, just looking over what, what uh, I may expect here, looks like I'm just going to get uh, three angles to do a verb 41 down 20, right? That's what it looks like from here, Jack. It's uh, pretty much the opposite of the uh, limb activation procedure where we uh, do the dark course line. Yeah, except, uh, you know, we did a lot of Verbo 6 down 20 enters simultaneously, and then uh, you all ship him up uh, full torque uh, values. You're not going to do anything like that, are you? Say again, please, uh, Jack. Okay, uh, during the activation part, uh, we do a lot of verb 06, now 20, enters simultaneously, reading out the difference in the angles, and then this bin furnishes a pulse torquing uh, angle in order to get the platform uh, final line. Uh, you, do you plan something like that, or just three course aligned angles? Jack, we're going to give you uh, three course aligned angles, and then uh, you can go uh, right to your checklist as we've given it and uh, start in with the verb 4920. Okay, real fine. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 135 hours, 52 minutes uh, on to the mission. Our displays uh, in mission control indicate the uh, lunar module cabin temperature now getting up to around 60 degrees. Uh, the uh, spacecraft currently running around uh, 40 amps. This is uh, as compared to 10 to 12 amps. Uh, 113 was in a powered down state. As you'll recall, we brought the uh, lunar module. Uh, and uh, Jack, how do you read? Five square. As you'll recall, we brought uh, okay, the. Okay, I was. Uh, Messed around shooting pictures of all the debris inside here uh, before we left, and uh, I inadvertently changed the settings on the uh, DC uh, man module result camera that we need for the uh, service module uh, pictures. I wonder if FAO, you can take them out of him again there, what we need, uh, F-stop and the speed. Okay, Fred, stand by. We uh, brought the uh, lunar module power up uh, about three hours early this morning uh, because Apollo 13 now has the uh, luxury of uh, margins in both power and uh, water. This does give uh, an added bonus. Uh, it puts the uh, 13 crew a step ahead in what could be considered a very busy timeline. We're now at uh, 135 hours, uh, 54 minutes into the flight, uh, we show Apollo 13 at 47,312 nautical miles away from Earth. Velocity now reading uh, 9,010 feet per second. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Fred, uh, in regards to the camera settings for the black and white uh, 3400 film, the settings were F5.6 at a 250th. Over. Okay, I'd uh, guess right then, after all, but uh, thank you. Query is Houston, over. Go ahead, Houston. Okay, uh, Jim, I got an MCC-7 pad when you're ready to copy, over. Okay, stand by. not to change this one. You ready to go? Go ahead, Joe. MCC-7, 137-39-4839-R, minus 
zero 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 three one plus all zeros plus zero 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 one in slash a plus zero zero two zero five zero 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 three one zero two three zero zero eight three five niner the rest is in slash a remarks plus x four jet rcs and your weights for the dap load lem weight two five one eight one csm weight six two four six eight over Okay, Joe, MCC 7, uh, 137, 3 niner, 483 three niner, minus 0, 0, 0, 3, 1, plus all balls, plus 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, in slash A, plus 0, 0, 2, 0, 5, plus 0, 0, 0, 3, 1, 0, 2, 3, Zero zero eight three five niner. Address the pad in slash A. Remarks. Plus X four jet uh, RCS college. Uh, the limb weight two five one eight one. CSM weight six two four six eight. Okay, read back correct. And Aquarius Houston, I uh, have a service module SEP pad if you want to copy that now. Over. Uh, say again, Joe. Uh, Roger, Fred, I have a uh, service module SEP pad with the attitudes. You don't need a, uh, a pad sheet for it, just, just any old blank sheet will do. Okay, I was going to say, I, uh, we don't hardly carry... Uh service module step uh, head. Yeah, we'll have to change that. Okay, I'm using a P-27 here. Uh, go ahead. Okay, uh, the pad reads as follows, and then I'll repeat the angles for you so you can copy them. Following MCC-7, maneuver the limb to the following FDAI attitudes. Roll Zero, zero, zero. Pitch, nine, one, decimal three. Yaw, zero, zero, zero. Now, do you want those attitudes repeated, Fred? Okay, following MCC seven, we're to maneuver to the following attitudes. Roll, zero, zero, zero. Pitch, zero, nine, or one point three. Yaw, zero, zero, zero. Okay, that's correct. And the, the last part of the pad is at uh, GET 1381000, which is EI minus 4.5 hours, execute a push of 0 0.5 feet per second, 4 jet plus X. Perform SM SEP, then execute pull 0 0.5 feet per second, 4 jet, minus X, over. Houston Aquarius, uh, Jack's entering the command module now. Okay, Jim. Okay, that last, Joe, was executed uh, at the GT of 138. One zero zero zero, which is EI minus four and a half hours. 
execute a push of uh, zero point five feet per second for jet ullage. Then execute uh, SM step followed by a pull of point uh, five uh, feet per second. Uh, with respect to a nomenclature on the uh, TTCA, I think uh, we really need an, uh, an up of point uh, five and then a down of point uh, five. That's correct, Fred. Okay, Aquarius, uh, the uh, last pad I have for you right now is the uh, LEM jettison pad, similar to the standby one, Aquarius. Okay, Aquarius Houston, uh, request poo and data for a data load, over. You got it. Okay, and I was about to say the LEM jettison pad is similar to the, the SM SEP pad, Fred, when you're ready to copy. Is it about the same number line? Yep. Okay, go ahead, Joe. Okay, Fred. Prior to 141.40.00, which is EI minus one hour, maneuver the LEM to the following FDAI angles. <clears throat> Roll 130. Pitch 125, yaw 012.4. The corresponding CSM gimbal angles will be roll 291, pitch 196, yaw. Zero four five, and that's the pad over. And the computer is yours, Aquarius. Thank you. Okay, LM step pad. Prior to one four one forty zero zero EI minus one R. Maneuver the following attitude. Roll one three zero. Pitch one two five. Yaw zero one two point four. The corresponding CSM gimbal angles are roll two nanner one, pitch one nanner six, yaw zero four five. Read back correct. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 136 hours, uh, 15 minutes down in flight. That uh, maneuver pad uh, for mid course seven was passed up. Shows a time of ignition of 137 hours, 39 minutes, uh, 48.39 seconds. With a delta V of 3.1 feet per second. And a burn duration of 23 seconds. Jim Lovell reported uh, Jack Swigert entering the command module. Uh, we copied that Where time. Go ahead, Joe. Okay, we're so efficient down here that we've got an entry pad ready, Fred. Uh, do you want to copy that for Jack? Over. I right, stand by. I'll have to try to uh, borrow his book from him. Roger. Can we hold off on that a little bit, uh, Joe? Oh, absolutely, Jim. Uh, we're well ahead. I just wanted you to know that we had it. Okay, I hope that when you set up all those uh, uplinks to Jack that you can get them up to the Quickly. Now we're shooting for less than five minutes. Sounds good. We copied uh, Jack Schweiger. And are you still uh, using the computer? That's a negative, uh, Fred. The computer's yours. We copied Schweiger uh, entering the command module at 136 uh, and Fred, hours, uh, 10 minutes, 49 seconds. Load in. Okay. Joe Kerwin, by the way, has taken over the position as capsule communicator here in the Mission Control Center. While in the uh, command module, uh, Schweigert will uh, be warming up uh, some of the systems, throwing the circuit breakers uh, and uh, main bus B and some uh, of the 
repeaters uh, for equipment aboard the, the command module. Almost at the uh, same time that uh, Swaggart entered the command module, uh, Ken Mattingly came into the control center. Still in a, an apparently spotless condition. We're at uh, 136 hours, 18 minutes into the flight. Uh, we show Apollo 13 at an altitude of 45,255 nautical miles. And traveling at a speed of 9,200 to 222 feet per second. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, Houston, uh, Aquarius. Go ahead, Aquarius. Okay, I just want to uh, clarify one thing on the left step pad. It appears to me that in my configuration, I could probably use a Burp 49 uh, loading at 622 yaw pitch and roll in that order, and then being able to fly out at 5018 and roll pitch and yaw. Is that correct? Stand by. I'll verify it, Jim. Okay, Joe, and while you're doing that, I've got a question about the command module checklist. Uh, okay, Jack. Uh, go ahead with your question. Okay, either I copied the circuit breaker wrong or uh, I can't uh, read it. Comes down uh, just about the oh, about the 20th one down. After uh, panel 276 where it says CB instrumentation power control 3 and 4 open. The next circuit breaker on panel 5. I, uh, would you uh, give that to me again? Roger. That's CB essential instrumentation power main B. Over. And it's closed. Okay, I just can't. Right, I just can't read my writing. Essential instrumentation power main B closed. That's affirmative. Aquarius Houston. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, Roger, the uh, word we have is that. Uh, you can't make a verb 49 maneuver to the LEM jettison attitude because those are FDAI angles we gave you. They don't correspond to the gimbal angles for the load. It'll have to be a manual maneuver, over. Okay. And mind out for gimbal eye. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 136 hours, 26 minutes uh, now into the flight. Our clock in mission control shows a uh, time of ignition uh, for uh, mid-course burn at uh, one hour, uh, 14 minutes from this time. 13 or 30 minutes uh, after the mid-course, uh, or four and a half hours prior to uh, time of entry interface, the uh, service module is scheduled to, to be jettisoned. At that time, uh, Jack Swigert uh, will be in the command module, uh, Jim Lovell and Fred Hayes in the lunar module. Lovell will fire the uh, lunar module thrust to push the service module at about one, about uh, one half uh, foot per second. Swigert uh, then activates the pyros with a switch in the command module. After separation, uh, Apollo 13 uh, will back off uh, with the uh, lunar module uh, reaction control system at uh, one half foot per second, uh, providing uh, a separation uh, delta velocity uh, of one foot per second. All three crewmen will be trying to take pictures uh, of the service module at that time. Uh, Swigert uh, out of window number five in the command module. Lovell and Hayes out of the lunar module. For the separation, uh, Apollo 13 will pitch about uh, 90 degrees along the radial axis. Uh, that would be 90 degrees off the flight path angle. And at time of uh, entry interface or entry into the Earth's atmosphere, the command module and service module should uh, be more than 16,000 feet apart. We're at uh, 136 hours, uh, 28 minutes into the flight, uh, we show uh, Apollo 13 at a distance of 44,395 nautical miles. And uh, a velocity of 9,312 feet per second. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Aquarius, uh, 
Aquarius, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Raj, we're looking at uh, Lem Current to uh, see if Jack has started his preheat, and we haven't seen it yet. Is he doing okay down there? Uh, Ethan Jackson, he already started. He said in one more minute he'll be up to 20 minutes. Oh, Roger that. Go ahead, Houston. Houston, 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 He says he had a battery A voltage drop of two volts, and you'll try to look at the test meter right now. Okay. He's been looking at it, but they haven't been coming up so far. We copy. Do you see the current now, uh, Houston? Uh, stand by one on that, Jim. That's affirmative, Jim. It looks like we are seeing one now. Okay. And thanks for keeping us on it. Okay. Aquarius, Houston. Go ahead. Uh, Roger, uh, reminder P41 for the RCS burn. Thanks for keeping us on it. We gotta protect our jobs, Jim. We've been dipped it so long here. Yeah. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 136 hours, 47 minutes. Uh, the flight control team here at Mission Control monitoring the uh, display. Noted that uh, Jim Lovell had punched uh, his onboard computer into program 40 which is uh, the thrusting program for the descent propulsion system. Then came the reminder to go to program 41 uh, for a reaction control system on mid-course burn. We show uh, that we're 51 uh, minutes, 50 seconds from time of ignition. Uh, with Apollo 13 at uh, distance of 42,599 nautical miles away from Earth, with a velocity of 9,515 feet per second. That's uh, 51 minutes, uh, 30 seconds now from time of ignition for mid-course, for the mid-course burn. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 136 hours, uh, 49 minutes down to the flight. Okay, Houston, I uh, finished up the maneuver and the auto maneuver in 41, but my uh, roll and the audio seem to be uh, offset. Mitch is okay. Uh, okay, uh, Jim, we copy. Stand by. Uh, Aquarius uh, Houston, recommend pings mode control to uh, at hold, save a little gas, and stand by on the air and yield. Okay. Aquarius Houston, did you call? Roger, uh, Joe. Uh, assuming we're going to do this burn in pink now, uh, ought to give you an update on uh, contingency book uh, pages 32, 33, and 34 because the, uh, the last time we went through this uh, portion, uh, we were burning it in ag. Okay, uh, Fred, stand by. We've been talking about uh, possibly having you do it in AGS. Uh, we recommend at this time that you do an AGS to things align, the 400 plus 3 procedure only. Over. Okay. And Aquarius Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, Roger, uh, we recommend that you uh, perform this burn in eggs as you did the last mid-course maneuver. Uh, we think it'll save gas. Over. Okay, uh, Joe, you want me to line up the same way we did the last one, too? Uh, stand by on that. Uh... That was Capsule Communicator uh, Joe Kerwin passing along to Jim Lovell. Uh, 
the recommendation to perform the uh, mid-course burn uh, with the and abort guidance system. Uh, Jackson's handed me some ejector temperatures if you want to read these on those at the 20 minutes. Roger, go ahead with those. K5 Charlie, 4.0. 5 Dog, 3.7. 6 Abel, 3.5. 6 Bravo, 4.1. 6 Charlie, 4.2. 6 Delta, 3.8. Okay, copy those, Fred. Aquarius Houston. Go ahead, uh, Houston. Okay, Jim, our recommendation on this burn is that you uh, maneuver to the burn attitude in Ping's min impulse, then do a body axis align, 400 plus five, followed by 400 plus zero, and then do the burn in ags, over. Okay, now we're, we're sitting at what the Ping's, uh, what you gave us for a Ping's attitude, is this the wrong one? Do you want me to just align up the uh, earth uh, as I did before the last mid course? Uh, no, we don't want you to do that. Uh, uh, read me your FDAI angles and let's compare them with what we have down here. Okay, you're, you're looking at them in the disc gig. Uh, I've got a uh, roll of uh, 847, pitch of about 0.51, and yaw looking at about 3.750. Okay, I'm looking at the uh, pitch of Okay, uh, Jim, those are very close. Uh, uh, all, I guess all you need to do is trim them up a bit. I plan to do a final uh, tramp, auto tramp, and then a forward jet translation. Okay, uh, Jim, uh, for fuel conservation, uh, we'd prefer you to, to trim it up mid impulse, and there's really very little trim required. And then. Uh, Go ahead and do it, Ags. We're uh, we're on the expected fuel usage, but we're just being old ladies about it. Okay, I understand. My only question, Joe, was the fact that both the roll and the, and the yaw needles did not go to null when I did an auto maneuver. Uh, I, I tried to go manually to the attitude and then uh, went to uh, auto, but the roll and the yaw did not come in at all. Uh, Raj, I haven't got an answer on that yet, but your attitude looks very close. Okay, I can take it on. Yes, sir.